So this is the final video for the CDC project. Um, and uh, we just finished the last step of this Android app development. Uh, now this Android app is able to call the Python script automatically and generate the causal chain of death. So first, uh, let's create a sample patient data. And we upload the patient information to the public server. And then we just need to uh, run the mobile app. And the patient name is Hoover. And let's search for this patient. And we find it. So well, we have found this patient, um, and well, somehow it's already pronounced that. But anyway, uh, let's pronounce that for real. So let's say the date of death is uh, January twenty uh, first, twenty twenty one. And the time of that, well, this doesn't really matter. You just say 10.35, or it should be PM. So, but anyway, we just say that. And they say the patient died in hospital based emergency department. And say the patient died at Emory Hospital. And it's one, two, three, main street in Atlanta, Georgia, 3032. And my full name, uh, Dr. Strange. Okay. So let's go to the next page. So um, our main contribution here is uh, we use checkpoint PY, uh, which is a bridge. Um, well, we can actually see the progress here. Uh, the Python code or the Android app is running the Python code at this point. So the idea is uh, the Android app automatically extract the diagnosis code of the patient from the uh, public server. And then uh, these diagnosis codes uh, will, will be fed into the Python script. And we use and, uh, the analytics parts with the Python script will automatically generate the causal chain of death. And we use neural machine translation to do that. Um, so we have, we have already finished the training uh, using the neural machine translation, and we just uh, do the decoding part. Uh, it's a little bit slow at this point. Uh, the reason is uh, the diagnosis code uh, we extracted from the public server are human readable codes, uh, saying that those are uh, English words, right? Like uh, multiple solaroses uh, or these things. So uh, we need to uh, map these um, human readable words or phrases into the ICD 9 code uh, from a large table, and we use a fuzzy uh, algorithm to do that. And the fuzzy algorithm is a little bit slow at this point uh, due to the uh, Java Python uh, bridge software issue. So I think that's the major bottleneck at this point. Uh, roughly, uh, this entire thing will take about two minutes to run. And hopefully it can be faster in the future um, once we solve the uh, fuzzy uh, algorithm thing. Uh, it could be 10 times faster. But anyway, so, 
uh, once we have the ICD-9 codes, we will use the neural machine translation algorithm to automatically generate causal chain of that in ICD-10 codes. And then uh, we will uh, we will find uh, use the uh, ICD-10 table to extract the human readable terms for these ICD-10 codes. That will be much faster. So that's the entire loop. Uh, we will get uh, get the ICD-10 code human readable terms from the uh, Python script. That's the final step. And as you can see here, the result is uh, there's only one uh, code in the uh, causal chain of death. And that is, uh, over here is uh, underlying cause of death, um, multiple celluloses. And the other three, where the chain uh, has only one code, this is quite common in clinical practice or in the data we have. And the other three are uh, not applicable, or meaning that there's no value here. And surely you can uh, you can do manual modification if you want, but uh, we just keep it at this point. And the last step is to review the all the information and submit to well and submit to the back to the public server and we scroll down and see all the information is correct and we just click this button to save some time and what well, street stress of class a certifier city code we just don't leave it uh, empty for now and we click confirm and submit and we shall have the patient information successfully updated we click this one let's see what happened here so we just updated the information uh, right now and the date of death Let's see where we can find the date of death. Okay, the death date here is uh well January twenty first, uh twenty twenty one. So we successfully update the information, um, and we have all the information related to death. So that's it for uh our presentation today. Thanks.